The Sesh Podcast, episode 156, take one. Hello and welcome back to the show, Traders and Joes. We are so happy to have you here today. I am Kendall, and today I am joined by a special co-host, my lovely love of my life, husband, wow. father of my child. <laughs> wow, I appreciate the the intro. Mm -hmm. He's here in the building. I'm actually so pumped to do an episode with you. It's been a while since you've been on the sesh. It has been. Josh, Josh is here in case you don't know who he is. Yes, I am Kendall's husband. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think most just of them happy know. to be here. Yep. Yep. Josh is filling in for Janelle today. She is off for Thanksgiving, visiting her family in North Carolina. And I'm so excited for her because she hasn't gotten to go in a while and seen a lot of her family. And Charlie is with her. Wow. So we are. she's actually currently on the flight. She just sent me a, a picture of Charlie at DIA having breakfast. You want to see? Yeah. Aww. He's at McDonald's. He's living his best. Check him out. Oh, my God. I'll send you this picture so you can overlay. But she was very nervous to bring him on the flight. But he is going across country today it so was, we do miss janelle it was so cute on thursday um she did like a little trial run so she put charlie in his uh yeah. in his little crate and like we were carrying him around the, the office to like make sure he's he's like safe and like he's comfortable in the little like dog not the crate but you know what i mean like the, the little carrier. Like, carrier yeah yeah in my next life i would like to come back as charlie oh but only if i'm adopted by janelle yes i was gonna say Anybody else might be a different different experience <laughs> for true. Charlie. That's so. true. And he did have a rough start to life. But anyway, <laughs> we are all here and joined by our lovely producing ladies. Welcome, Sydney welcome. Sydney and Corelli. Yep, we're welcome here. Welcome back to the show. And yeah, so this episode is, is it going up the day before Thanksgiving or are we delaying? This uh, week is so weird with the holiday. No, it's going up on, it's going up on Wednesday this on week. On Wednesday? Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, we wish you all a happy holiday in advance then. But anyway, we have a lot to go over today. Josh, you're going to be joining us for the first time for like a real sesh session. I'm I'm here for it. It's because normally you come on and we do advice yeah. or, you know, we do some type of topic the entire time. Today, we're going to be doing like a full sesh smorgasbord. Smorgasbord? Okay. <laughs> Wait, that's not how you say it, right? Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord? Board? Mm -hmm. Is it board or borg? Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. Oh, I thought it was borg or borscht. I don't know. <laughs> borscht is a soup. It's a board. <laughs> borscht is a soup. Yeah, I believe it's a s Polish soup or Ooh, I it's would like some borscht. It's a cold soup. You know, cold soup. Mm. Maybe it's Russian. Not I don't really know. really wild about cold soup. Nasty. Yeah. I don't know. I'll pass on that. I wish we had a, a soup today. Last week, you missed it. We had tomato soup and bread and a candle. It was amazing. A butter smorgish candle. board. Yep. A, a smorgish a board. board. Yeah, it's a board for sure. Yeah. Okay, right. Like a Smorgasbord. Like a, board. Yeah, like yeah. bring you a bunch of food. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm bringing you a bunch of board today. Um, <laughs> we're going to be going over a couple different spicy topics. And Ooh. then we're going to get into some Am I the Asshole? And then we're going to play the newlywed game, which we should probably have a different name for that since we have been married for going on eight years. The old. The old. I keep saying the oldly wed the game. Old wedded fools. Mm. We'll see if you guys. Um, playing old wedded fools today. Yeah. How how many years has it been? It'll be eight in June. Okay. So you guys, you're going to show up. Yep. <laughs> you have to show up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can you believe we're going on, I think it's, yeah, 14 years together next year. I know. We're getting closer and closer to passing that mark of yes. we've been together longer than we've been alive. Yeah. Once it's 17 years, more years then it, yeah. will, it will be yep. crazy. Anyway, yes, we have a lot to go over here today. Let's start with a few announcements. First of all, we have new merch. All of our shows have a new hoodie coming out, and this is a heavyweight, high-quality hoodie. We are so excited about it. The Sesh one is absolutely amazing. Sydney did such great work on it. Yes, Sid, please show. Yes, it's oversized, so definitely if you don't want it to be too big, then um, size down. And then it's really warm. It's like super comfortable. It's a thick boy. Yeah, this is all embroidery here. Is Would that you say this is the best quality we've ever put out? We really oh, invested in these. I really think so. Yeah. All of the hoodies them, themselves are great quality. They are thick. Yeah. This is some of my favorite merch. I know. I feel like I say that every, <laughs> every know, merch every launch, time. 
but this is like one of my absolute favorite. The garment Sweatshirts. itself is yes. so nice. And the color is just very... Yeah, it looks really nice. Personally, I, I was a little worried that it was going to like wash me out. Yeah. But no, it's like the perfect blush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a dusty sage. Is we went back say. and forth mm. on this color for quite some time, actually. Yeah. Finally nailed this one. I love it. So please check that out. It's available at where? Sydney? I always forget the name of our new shop. The Sesh dot shop right that's easy to remember the sesh dot shop also i just wanted to make a quick note that we are going to be matching all of your donations to neck mech from now until the end of the year so definitely take advantage of that you can go to our missing kids campaign that's at missingkids.org slash campaign slash kendall ray er, okay this is complicated the link will be in the description box but any donation you make there will be matched by us so definitely take advantage of that also, we just came out with a new neck mech hoodie that is also great quality. It's available for pre-order and 100% of the profit, as always, is donated directly to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. I'm really excited about this one, too, because we've never really done a hoodie. We haven't done a hoodie, right? No. I keep saying that. We have not done a hoodie. This nope. is the first one, and it has a design not only on the front, but also on the back, and I love the color of it. So check it out, guys. Support neck mech. Also, now is a great time to stock up on all of your CBD wellness products from our mm -hmm. brand or company, ourlovewellness.com. Our Black Friday sales going on from Friday all the way through Wednesday of the following week. And we are giving 25% off each single item. There's no exclusions for that, as well as 20% off of bundles. So it's Ooh, a great time to that's a deal. stock up because, yeah, you can save a lot of money with the sale we got going on. We ship to all 50 states and most countries other than Canada. Unfortunately, we can't get it up there to, for you guys. But again, it is 100% legal, nothing to worry about. And everything's really high quality. Everything's made from CBD extracted from hemp grown right here in the beautiful state of Colorado. We've got gummies, we've got topicals, we've got pet products. You mm -hmm. know, if mm -hmm. anything, CBD is very beneficial for, for dogs. So check it out. My yeah. cats. Yes, that's or true. Cats, yeah. cats too. Yep. We do and have a pet oil that cats can take. My as well. current favorite product line for us is our sleep collection yes it is amazing i take it every night it really helps my quality of sleep i notice such a difference when i don't take it at night it's great because it doesn't have melatonin in it so a lot of people don't like taking melatonin um so this is just using a natural cannabinoid called cbn mm -hmm. uh, which is added along with the cbd and those two together actually just work wonders it will help you just get a more restful night of sleep it will they also really just help you kind of wind down the day and we have that in gummies and oils uh, among other things so and those gummies are like candy delicious. favorite flavor we've ever done absolutely obsessed so. yeah it's almost uh it's lavender is what we're calling it but it mm -hmm. really tastes like cotton candy yeah very close to i it. like to call them cotton candy yeah they're delicious they're so good it's my like little nightly treat but yeah check it out sales going on starting black friday running through the following wednesday november 29th at higherlovewellness.com Friends, the holiday season is right around the corner. It's practically here. I would argue it is here. And with that comes gift giving, lots of great food, and of course, holiday photos. Now, let me tell you about a time a few years ago where we were taking family photos and I could not believe when I got them back that I had a giant zit that was just protruding and very out and loud in the open on my forehead in all of our family photos. I look back at those photos and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't know I had this giant red zit. I basically looked like Rudolph, but on my forehead. And while we can't control other aspects of the holidays, we can make sure that you feel super confident and camera ready for your photos. And that's why I'm so excited today to be partnering with Apostrophe. Now I am a big fan of Apostrophe. I have been using Apostrophe now for over two years and it's an amazing service. It's so convenient. And let me tell you why, if you're not using it, you're totally missing out. Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne. Simply fill out an online consultation about your skin goals, medical history, and then snap a few selfies, and a dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan just for you. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, even back, chest, and butt acne. You can treat breakouts from head to toe. 
Personally, I use Spirno Lactone and I always get my prescription through Apostrophe. It's so easy and I love that they send a larger amount at a time so I don't have to refill it every month. And I like that they put some type of minty coating on their pills. And it's just nice to have easy access to an expert derm team and not have to do an in-person appointment or trip to the pharmacy. And we have a special deal for our audience. You can get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash sesh when you use our code sesh. That's a savings of $15. And that code is only available to our listeners. To get started, go to apostrophe.com slash sesh and click get started. Use our code sesh at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you to Apostrophe for sponsoring this episode. Let's get into some spicy topics, shall we? Let's get spicy. Spicy. I've never been spicy with us. No, it sounds like fun. And you actually found our first topic of the day. Yeah, just kind of ran across this story. You know, I follow a lot of uh, news, gaming sites, IGN, stuff like that, where, you know, they kind of keep up with all of the Twitch streamers and you know gamers and everything and and this one really stuck out to me because if it's not looking good for for Mr. Gerard here, Gerard, I've yeah. never heard of Gerard. Gerard Khalil, who's also known as the completionist online. If you've ever watched any of his videos or or streams, he's one of those gamers who goes through different video games and completes them one hundred percent. So like doing every task or achievement in mm-hmm. those games and you know completely finishing it off. No stone left unturned. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Okay, so he has 1.6 million subscribers on YouTube, and he has an active role in a charity called the Open Hands Foundation, which we love a creator that gives back. The foundation became a nonprofit organization in 2014, and the charity claims to spend the funds on dementia research, working with the University of California, San Francisco as their main benefactor. It was actually started by his dad, Charles, in memory of his wife, Karen. So it's like a family um, owned foundation or at least started by them. So Gerard and his four other siblings play an active role in the foundation, according to their website, active in quotes, Mm -hmm. because we're not so sure now. But since this is a 501c3 organization and is tax exempt, their yearly tax filings are made public, of course. And we got this information from some ordinary gamers on YouTube who took a deep dive into their yearly taxes. And what he found was interesting, to say the least. The form they looked at is called the 990PF, and it looks at the money raised and the money going out. And each year, more and more money would come into the account, and the only money that would be taken out was for operating and administrative expensive, which makes you raise an eyebrow yeah, there, right? it's very questionable. There should be a lot more coming out than that. Mm-hmm. And according to the foundation's tax filings, they received a significant amount of contributions each year, deducted some expenses, and then added the remaining cash to their existing stockpile, which now totals $655,000. Line 23 to 24, line 26 shows the year's expenses, and line 25 shows the contributions, gifts, grants, basically the donations that are paid out. And as you can see, that number is zero meaning no money was ever sent out to anyone. Well, since they became um, a nonprofit in 2014, that none of the money has gone out like since the beginning. And that YouTuber, Some Ordinary Gamer, he went through and like looked at every single of the of the, the previous year's tax form. And honestly, like it was a really long video. It was probably like 30, 40 minutes long. If you're like interested in it, I definitely recommend it because he went super in depth and kind of like explained everything. There was this part where... Gerard, he goes on some streamers video and he, he talks about how the money is in the account. It hasn't been touched. So they've he's fully acknowledged the fact that no money. Has they've been never donated. used it for anything. Never so what's the it. point of what's uh, the point of having it? What's the point of promoting it if you're not going to use it at all? And that's the thing, too. It's shady for sure. Yeah. But at least the money hasn't been used. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. money is all accounted for and it is all in the account. Yeah, but the money is being used because they're paying for for expenses, their and stuff. salaries yeah. and stuff. You know, That's they're true. they're getting paid from the foundation to work for it. But totally. it's like, what what is what are you working on if you're not right. actually What's working the work on any the projects? Charity is actually doing. Yeah, what the and hell? there should be payments being dispersed to whatever the charity is actually for versus just because all they're basically it's just a business that isn't doing any charity work. And those that work for the charity are the only ones benefiting. Oh, yeah, I yeah. see what you mean. So that's yeah. 
so that's it's a insane. major major problem right because the way that charities work is it's supposed to be after all of your work is done with the charity then you pay yourselves whatever you can and that should be a significantly lower amount than what you're actually oh, yeah, sending sure. out right so it's very very fishy that there's no money going out for any sort of actual charity work and it's just going to administrative uh you know funds or like operating expenses. expense yeah. yeah so they're just getting a tax free oh my god benefits oh, right. from so, this this charity oh, okay. and also taking a salary from it because he is promoting it and he's doing work for it work quote unquote um so gerard runs this event called indie land and it's basically a bunch of like indie games indie develop like indie game developers um publishers like just people in the gaming world but they're raising money they're st like they're, they raised money for it this year too you know what and i mean at the event they raise funds yes and it's supposed to be going towards fighting dementia. Indie Land works directly with Open Hands Foundation. And Open I mean, Hand even has their philosophy on their website. It says the concept of Open Hand is the more you receive, the more you give. And the more you give, the more you receive. Life gives, life takes. There's a whole <laughs> lot of taking here and not a whole lot of giving, it seems. Yeah, where's the work you're actually doing to fight against dementia? That's my question. Wow. So in the 10 years of filings, they haven't dispersed a single penny to anyone, although the money is still in the account. What the fuck? Why? I don't know. I mean, one don't thing they know people are going to see that, well, especially because it's like all of these tax filings are made public yeah. every year. They make it that way so people can actually go and see who what, yes. what their money's going towards when they donate to a charity. But the only thing that I can think of is potentially they are in the process which they should have done this from the get-go but they're in the process of setting up some sort of program at you know they're working with the university or whatever and maybe there's some delays there which i mean from 2014 to now i don't that's know i mean 10 delay. years that's i don't know yeah. i don't know how you can make excuses for this because it seems pretty obvious that i mean what the foundation is really for well, what are you fundraising for at the end of the day right i mean and these are likely people that are fundraising or donating to it are people who have been affected by dementia in some way and are hoping that that money is getting to people immediately. I mean, this isn't, there's no time to waste with dementia of no. all things, yeah. right? Um, it's pretty bizarre. And he is assuring that the full amount of money is in the account, better be, <laughs> and Open Hands Foundation is looking to donate it as soon as possible. What was the, um, if you go back to the form, does it say what their operating expense was? The one that we're looking at right now this year was 2020. They raised a total of $122,000. The yearly expenses 2020 was $6,140. That was like the only thing that was deducted from the total, like the yearly total. You'll see on the second page of the filing from the beginning of the year of 2020, they had uh, $325,000. They ended the year with $442,000. So it doesn't seem like they've spent a lot of money on administrative no, or giving out full no. salaries and so they're that, not taking a ton out of it right it's and not great a lot of sure, it is probably but, just like running expenses just to right. like maintain the, the organization I mean, it's you know pretty I mean? minimal but it's just the idea that people are donating their money thinking it's going it's or going to be helping someone fairly quickly and it's just sitting in this bank account and it's been sitting there for 10 years that's just and wild if they had raised any money from before 2014 none of all that's private because they hadn't been um made classified as a as a pro as a nonprofit yet interesting and so he and the open hands foundation neither of them have made a statement on this at all yeah i would like to know what the plan is like what they've got to have something they, to say about what are they this? doing what's the point of sitting on that money and not doing anything with it and continue fundraising if yeah i don't know it's very weird who knows if they will honestly i mean i'm, I'm assuming He's going to have to at some point, especially if he's going to yeah. continue to be making videos like this and is something you have to address. He's going to continue to fundraise. Right. Yeah. There has to be some le some legal in this in the sense that they're not. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what the I'm not a charity expert, but I don't know if the know IRS if has like I think there's probably some parameters around how you operate your your charity. And mm -hmm. I'm sure I, I don't know that there's any legal issues with just fundraising money as long as you're not actually pulling it and spending it on something yeah because i mean the, the only thing that would be an issue is if they were raising that money and then you know say their operating expenses and salaries were the primary yeah 
you know, mm-hmm. beneficiary uh, of this money being being raised, it but doesn't it doesn't really look like that, that way. way. So yeah. as long as they, I mean, it seems like they haven't had any issues since they've started this in 2014. Because if you do do funny business on your, I mean, the IRS, I mean, they they suck, but they do their best to stay on top of these charities and making mm-hmm. sure that they're operating uh, within the confines of the law. So maybe they're not doing anything wrong. And it's just kind of, I think it's just, raises more questions about what's the purpose of this charity if there's nothing yeah. coming out of it you know what i mean it. and very maybe that again maybe they're working on something big they just haven't talked about yet and it's just taken a lot of time to that is possible put that a is possible. put a partnership together but again you should probably figure that out before you start a foundation mm-hmm. um yeah i mean i want to believe that their intentions are good here and that anyone who starts obviously not Everyone who starts a 5013C actually does good things with it. But I think the majority of people get into this for the right reason. And I would hope that there's some type of plan. Maybe it's just laziness that they just haven't taken the time to actually do anything with it, which is a shame because this is quite a bit of money raised that could really, really help this cause. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just don't know where to put the money yet. Maybe they're trying to get it to a million and they make one big million dollar donation. I don't know. (laughs) Strange. It it is weird, though, to be doing events and everything like that yeah for the charity and yeah, it's other people spending no, their time on it yeah for what right if it's just sitting in a, an account somewhere so mm. well it's unlikely that there will be any legal repercussions but we will keep our eyes out on this situation because it is certainly pretty peculiar i am so excited to be sponsored by uncommon goods because it is one of my personal favorite places to buy all of my family and friends gifts for the holiday season. Uncommon Goods is here to make holiday shopping stress-free by sourcing the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for mom, dad, teenagers, in-laws, your best friends, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. Here's a few of my favorite gifts that I've found on their site. Last year I got Josh something for his desk so that I knew he would see it and appreciate it and think of me every day. And it was a Mars themed Zen garden, which if you know Josh, that's right up his alley. It's so unique and I love going into his office and playing with it. It's just the coolest thing. And the best part about Uncommon Goods is when you shop with them, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches. So shop now before they sell it this holiday season. And folks, I can tell you from experience, they definitely do. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique and often handmade or made in the US. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere, from art to jewelry to kitchen, home and bar. Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not some lackluster gift that you can just find anywhere. Uncommon experiences are more than virtual classes. They're unexpected opportunities to have fun and connect in new ways, everything from tarot reading to romantic map making, cooking and mixology classes, and more. And we love Uncommon Goods because for every purchase, they give back a dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than two and a half million dollars to date, which is super cool. So get 15% off your next gift. Just go to uncommongoods.com slash sesh. That's uncommongoods.com slash sesh for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we are all out of the ordinary. Well, in other spicy news, we have to talk about Mr. George Santos, one of our favorite people to talk about here on the sesh. You've never- Yeah, you guys are big, big fans over we, here. We kind of are. We, we love the George shit show as it is unraveled. We've talked about him at least, what, like 10 times on this show? Yeah. I was him for Halloween. We're dedicated to Georgie Porgy put in lies. And speaking of financial fraud, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. This guy. He is, dude, you don't even know, like, the extent of everything he's lied about. There's a, besides all the financial corruption and everything, he has lied about so much. Like dumb stuff. Yes, dumb things. He pretended that his mom was in 9-11. She wasn't. He stole puppies from a, a puppy mill, but then sold them. He stole a scarf from a friend and wore it to the Stop the Steal rally. It's just a very uh, interesting man, to yeah. say the least. He claimed that when he was in college, he played volleyball and they were mm-hmm. like state champions or something. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, I don't even know if he went to college. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. It's wonderful to know that this is our uh, mm-hmm. fine elected official mm-hmm. in yep. our government. And the first gay congressman, correct? Uh, first gay Republican congressman. Re- Republican yeah. Con- yeah. congressman, which always blows my mind. The first ever. I mean, we have a lot of congressmen, but he's the first and mm. representing real well. I mean, what George is really known for, though, 
was lying about doing drag in his past. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's really how George made the scene. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So he eventually admitted to it. But anyway, the latest on George. Thursday, November 16th, the House Ethics Committee released a long-awaited report that shows a substantial amount of evidence that George used campaign funds for his own personal use. After being exposed, Georgie <laughs> announced that he won't be running for re-election in 2024, which is big news. Thank God. When one of you sent this to our group chat, our sesh chat, mm -hmm. I can't remember who, but I think you did. Janelle yeah. was sad at first. I know. <laughs> I was like, sent a, a celebration emoji and Janelle was like, oh, damn it. She was kind of sad because it means the George show might be ending. But do you really want the George show to be going on? No, no. I, I was going to say, she's, she's disclaimer, absolutely kidding. Disclaimer, we're, important... we don't actually support this man. <laughs> we just get a lot of uh, laughs and a lot of fun out of George. Um, but I don't think that fun is going to stop because I think the yeah. lies will continue on and he will just be a character for years to come. So George said he will continue to serve his district up until he's allowed. So no notice of his resignation at this time, which is surprising. I honestly thought with everything that's gone on and this latest report is fucking bad. Oh, so so bad. I'm surprised that he is not just going to resign. Or Am I surprised? Probably not. Do you think he just got into this for the the fame? Probably. Yeah. And the attention? But he's riding this train as long as possible, guys. And on Thursday after the report came out, George posted this to Twitter or X. Yeah, are we, Twitter. Are we ever going to call it X? No, let's just keep on calling it Twitter. What do you say? I'm Xing right now? Yeah, <laughs> stupid. Re-Xing, X post, X videos. I mean, that doesn't sound yeah, great. Yeah, it sounds like a porn site. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. Isn't it a porn site? I mean, you it might as well be. Yeah, you can post on there, actually. Okay, this is a long ass statement. Yeah. Shall I read the but whole thing? But of course thing? he's like, they're after me. They're oh, trying, yeah. you know, it's always, that's always the classic excuse. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, they're trying to take me down. These lies mm -hmm. that they're spreading about me. It's disgusting. That's, that's his, uh, that's his whole MO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Let's just read a little bit of it. I'm not going to waste my breath on this entire thing, but he says, if there was one single ounce of ethics in the ethics committee, <laughs> they would not have released this biased report. The committee went to extraordinary lengths to smear myself and my legal team about me not being forthcoming. My legal bills suggest otherwise. <laughs> it is disgusting, politicized smear that shows the depths of how low our federal government has sunk. Everyone who participated in this grave miscarriage of justice should all be ashamed of themselves. We the people desperately need an Article 5 constitutional convention we are quickly approaching $34 trillion in debt. The government is continuously on the verge of a shutdown. True. Can't deny that. Um, our southern border is wide open, and our current president is the head of an influence-peddling crime family. And all this Congress wants to do is attack their political enemies, tit-for-tat, unconstitutional um, censures, impeachments, expulsions, and ethics investigations. The time is now, in all caps, for the states to rise up and commence an Article 5 constitutional convention. I've come to expect vitriol from political opposition, but not from the howled halls of public service, which a lot of the things he is saying, I mean, there is, a, our government is truly fucked. Completely agree with him there. There's a lot that needs to be looked at. But nice job trying to just like, look deflect, at this. Deflect, way deflect, over, deflect, way yeah. worse over there. So right. you think way my mess over is there. bad. How about the federal government's mm -hmm. mess? Let's focus on that. <laughs> anyway, he, he says some more shit, but I don't want to read it. Um, he wraps it up by saying, public service life was never a goal or a dream, but I stepped up to the occasion when I felt my country needed it most. Bullshit. God Seriously, bless thank George you, Santos. George. Thank you. We'd be nowhere thank without him. Thank you for your him. valiant service. <laughs> I will 100% continue to maintain my commitment to my conservative values in my remaining time in office. And earlier this month, George made it clear in an interview that he would run for his seat next year, even if the House voted to expel him. So he's in major DeLulu here. The committee said that George was frequently in debt and has a horrible credit score. <laughs> and it's clear that he heavily relied on campaign funds to finance his luxurious spending habits. Let's take a look at what the report alleges that George's campaign funds were spent on. Oh. Number one, honeymoon in Vegas. The committee <laughs> reviewed the taxi and hotel charges that were made in Vegas with the campaign credit card. During the time George told his campaign staff 
He was on his honeymoon and there were no other campaign events on the calendar that could justify these charges. So he's just spending it on himself. Honeymoon with who himself? No, his husband. Yeah, he's married. This is just so silly because it's like the way that I I understand campaign funds working is it's the same as like business expenses, right? Like it'd be the same thing if like you and I, we went on our honeymoon and then (laughs) said it was a business expense. Yeah. And tried to, you know, get a tax credit for that (laughs) on our tax returns. It's just like, it's just straight (laughs) fraudulent. I mean, you can't do that. It, just, it pisses me off, honestly, that oh, it should. politicians it should. do this. And yep. and George isn't the only one. No, there's George is shitloads of them. The most fun it. to talk about, but there's tons of them. We have endless corrupt politicians. I just don't know how they think that this is not going to get exposed. Like it's. I know. I don't know if they care, honestly. Like, well, yeah, I don't. I don't think they can relate to like the normal American. You know what I mean? No, and I think they think they're just going to get away with it for the most part because a lot of them do. Yeah, well, that's mm-hmm. the thing. A lot just of them not, do strong enough repercussions for this no and they are going extra hard on george rightfully so i think personally. I, I do too but other people deserve this shit too hampton's holiday funded by george's campaign the ethics committee reviewed a charge made on july 7th 2022 for three thousand three hundred thirty two dollars and 18 cents for an airbnb stay that was reported to the fvc as a <laughs> hotel stay the same day that george was off to spend a weekend in the hamptons uh. Oh, Atlantic City getaway. Last year in July, over $2,000 of campaign funds was spent at a resort in Atlantic City, New Jersey, which doesn't make sense because there are no records of any campaign event, of course not, being held in Atlantic City during that time. George frequently told staff members that he enjoyed visiting casinos and playing roulette often with his husband. One of Atlantic City's biggest draws is its casinos. So this, this is adding right up. For There's a pattern here. He mm-hmm. likes Vegas. He likes Atlantic City. <laughs> he clearly likes to gamble, yep. which gambling with campaign funds sounds like a great use of of uh, <laughs> taxpayer dollars and, and donors. Uh, your private donors. Yeah. yeah. Which and maybe he, the donors don't give a shit. They're like, ah, whatever, you know, oh, go no, do whatever you want. They give a shit. People are pissed. He is, he is really not many people standing beside him these days. It's pretty bad. Pretty grim. And I mean, a lot of uh, even his own Republican supporters, yeah. they they bailed on him after the whole the drag thing came out. They were like, the fuck? So. Yeah. Hmm. There were several un- other instances as well where campaign funds were used for personal use, including trips to the spa, baby. Stressful being a congressman. That's right. You the know, report found a purchase of, of $1,500 made Jesus. on a campaign debit card at... Uh, Mirza Aesthetics in 2020. The expense was not reported to the FEC and was noted as Botox. <laughs> Damn, that's a lot in Botox. Is that like... Have you that, seen his face? Yeah, that's like, true. He's got a lot. Yeah. But it's that expensive? I always was under the impression Botox is around like three to 500 or something. I think something. it depends on how much, uh, like how, how many, many units, CCs you get, like how many yeah. units oh, right, you get. Right, right, right. CCs, whatever it is. Yeah, no, you're um, right. That's expensive. So. And if you're not familiar with Botox, that's not going to last that's it's for a short period of time, like what, three to six months or something like yeah. that. Or I guess it depends on where you get it. I, don't I know. mean, for me, I can see the justification for the the Botox a little bit more oh, than the, right. the Airbnb stay totally and the hotel needed, stay. Because it's his public appearance. I mean, look, there's <laughs> endless pictures of him online. So maybe he's like, hey, it's you know, a business part expense. Of my, part of my job. I've got to look not, good. It's not. And I know this for a fact that any because it's the IRS sees anything that can be used as personal Mm -hmm. the majority of the time any sort of skincare services spa services clothing esthetician stuff clothing is not a business (laughs) so you mean i can't go get botox and make it a charge for business damn it that was my plan (laughs) i thought george was teaching me something here (laughs) god well similarly another purchase was made with the campaign card for 1400 bucks at Virtual Skin Spa, which is also described as Botox in the expense report. <laughs> He's just putting it out there. And a payment of $50,000 was sent to George from the campaign committee, which is a bank account created by George, of <laughs> course. And the money was used to pay down his personal credit card bills and other debt. So who knows what the, what the fuck else what's, he was spending what's it on. What's George's net worth, according to Google? I'm yeah, curious. let's look it up. This guy can't be like broke. Probably to, it's not even out there, huh? I mean, $49 million in assets? I don't know. That's... What? So, 49 million? I don't believe that. Yeah, net well, worth is 49. Net worths are always extremely inaccurate. Yeah, they yeah. are. Online. They're always way higher than what they actually yes, are. Yes, yes. 
Uh, Santos filings now claim net worth of 11 million. What did that one? 11 million. That's still a lot. Damn. Well, he also stopped by, uh, I never know how to say this brand, Hermes. Hermes. Yes. Hermes. 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 Like the Greek. Yeah. It's like Hermes. But Hermes. 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 He went yeah. to Hermes and he spent $4,127.80 and <laughs> on all of his necessities, of course. He's got to be styling when he's rolling mm-hmm, around. Mm-hmm. That's so much money. Oh, my God. In November last year, George's campaign transferred $20,000 to his Devolder organization, LLC, which we don't have time to dive into it all, but we have talked about many times. Devolder is a big problem in itself. And per the report, the money was used to make $6,000 worth of purchases at Formaggio for... for- for Agamo. For Agamo. Story. God, he's got expensive taste. This is a high quality, luxurious Italian brand. Very expensive. George also used that money to pay his rent, and then $800 was withdrawn near a casino again, and another 1000 was withdrawn from an ATM near his apartment. And then he finished up with similar purchase, smaller purchases at OnlyFans. <laughs> wow. Hell wow. yeah, baby. Sephora, and of course, some food and parking to top it off. Um, OnlyFans model, uh, how do you say her Layla name? Layla Lewis. Layla Lewis alleged that George was subscribed to her and asked her to rate his peen. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so George is just wilding out. Like this, this man is, he is wild. And actually there's this clip of him on CNN claiming to have, like recently claiming that he has no idea what OnlyFans even is. I'm going to send it to you guys so we can play it real fast. You know, I'll, I'll I'll indulge you this. I just discovered what OnlyFans was about three weeks ago when it was brought up in a discussion in my office. <laughs> what do you think? And I was ve- I was oblivious to the whole concept. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just can't tell the truth. He's lying. Oh my god! <laughs> in that moment, as a staffer, I was listening to this is one of his staffers. The interview um, in an earpiece with when Kennedy said that, and I tried so hard not to laugh loud enough for audio to pick it up because I thought, oh, okay, here's another lie. Um, <laughs> because, I mean, I hate to say it, and now that the report indicates that he in, he in fact knew about OnlyFans because, uh, you know, he used campaign funds to uh, uh, open an account. Oh, my you God. <laughs> Isn't that like, you can't write this shit. Only in America, man. This just makes me sad, honestly. I know, it is sad. It's very sad. Because I'm just like, this is what we have. Why isn't why isn't this guy in jail? I know. This, well, that's what we're these saying. Should be, and this is the problem with our country is that there's too many double standards here. Because if anybody else, like mm-hmm. say you used your charity to make all of these purchases that he did, yeah, the IRS would audit your ass and and prob- you could face jail time for these kinds of offenses. And yet mm-hmm. in our government, you're basically able to do whatever you want especially when it comes to campaign funding, clearly. Well, all of this stuff so is like, just coming out, so who knows what else. Well, they be- it's like, what are they going to do? Kick him out, expel him, and that's it? No, he should have to pay all of this back. Yeah, I agree. And then... But he probably won't. Yeah. Get charged with something. I mean, that's the problem, is just politicians don't face any sort of punishment when it comes to the, the stupid things that they do. Oh my God, this tweet, I have to read it. Someone said... You're making fun of George Santos, a man whose mother died not once, not twice, but possibly three times now. That's low. That is low. <laughs> the lowest form. Amazing. God, George. He's just, he could be a movie on He's George. He's clearly not interested in being a politician. No, Because no. if he was, he would have used that money to actually do campaign events. No, he's so, a fame whore. Yeah. I feel like George Santos is just looking for a show on Bravo. He, yeah, he should get you a know, show. He Bravo. just he's just like a reality back, a reality star. No, he you know, wants he's just one. trying to be that. He wants to live that life, clearly. For oh, yeah. definitely. So get the fuck out of politics. Stop fucking shit up. Well, at least he is and go, getting go out. be a reality star. Well, through all of this, all shit. year he's been like, I'm not going anywhere, bitch. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, these things have been slowly trickling out about him for a long time. Years. And I think this this was the final nail. He's like, oh shit, they know about the Botox. They know about the gambling. They know about, they the know only about fans. OnlyFans. I'm fucked. Well, it's just going to get worse. Like, yeah. Has he, he done anything in. good? No. Has he done any sort no. of work for the people of New York? Um, Just the fact that he's the first openly gay pol- like Republican cool. politician. Wow. What a damn what shame he that, he is, that he's people. the one. I know. It's so like, uh, my God. Not the representation so we disappointing. need. Yeah. No. Does he even publicly 
support no. gay people? Well, no, not like, really. Like, does he celebrate Pride Month? Does he like no. go and speak at LGBTQ no. plus? I mean, he was events? he was ashamed of dressing in drag. Yeah, he so that kind he, of like he is openly spoken against. Oh my god, he's yeah. like he's like kind of homophobe LGBT. So he's just yes. a snake. Yeah, he's he's a fucking fool. He's, dude's got major issues, but at least he's got good Botox. Yep, and those lip fillers. Mm-hmm. You know, what's kind of funny to me is just like the imagery of like so you know like back then like let's think back to like Napoleon days, right? Like, George is like the modern day Napoleon, like the fucking fool. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I wonder back. if in a thousand years we're going to look back and George is going to be like this, I don't know, just like this icon. Mm. I, <laughs> hope. icon. I hope not. But just this, just, just like this laughing like, laughable. Yeah. Like, I mean, because Napoleon is pretty laughable too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But he so, actually did some shit, you know? Like, <laughs> well, yeah. But that's what I mean. Like, Josh says, don't hate on Napoleon. No, I'm not a Napoleon fan, but like, he, <laughs> he has more. Yeah accomplishments if you want to call him that in george his, has got nothing. his resume no, but, than george what has george done that he's a volleyball ch- a volleyball champion okay my god dude there's like not one good thing on here when i look up what has he done for long island it's like he's <laughs> been charged <laughs> with 23 other than <laughs> misrepresent all the people of long island yep oh my gosh so bad such an idiot I would anyway. love to sit down with him and like pick his brain because I let's really get him on the show. Reach oh out. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, Guys, actually, actually, I am going to reach out. Let's try. Why not? Reach out. Say we're big fans. We want an interview. <laughs> we want an interview, George. You never know. An ex- or it's not going to be like an expose. Sometimes um, these people go on shows. I mean, I highly doubt George would do it, but I'm sometimes shocked by the interviews some people are set up for. Like their team just does not look into it and they end up on shows that absolutely hate them. I think we'd have a chance. Let's I think just reach out. We could all dress up as him before yeah. he shows up. <laughs> we could even we send him have... our costumes. <laughs> yes. And show him that we what are fans true we are. fans. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to know the truth, George. It's it's his chance to set the record straight here yes. in the flesh. We'll fly him out. Wow. George, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's enough of that. Picture this, you're hanging out in your favorite spot, headphones on, and the world around you fades away. When listening to Dipsy Stories, you're immersed in a vivid world where every touch, every breath, every stolen glance is felt with breathtaking intensity. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women, and they bring scenarios to life. They've got immersive soundscapes and realistic characters that you won't want to miss. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, hot and heavy hookups, and so much more. What's really cool is Dipsy is super inclusive. They have something for everyone to listen to, whether you're straight or queer, and 56% of stories are voice acted by people of color. What's so cool about Dipsy is that you can listen to spicy audios by your favorite TikTok creators. They're attentive to your every need, prioritize your pleasure, and of course have voices that will make you melt. And Dipsy is always releasing new content, so you never have to worry about running out of stuff to listen to. In between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy written stories to read. If you guys are looking to get a little spicy this holiday season, let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. Okay, so we're going to start doing some Am I the Asshole here, but we're going to do this first one a little differently because you haven't yet seen this gospel singer on a Delta flight. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about this. So what's this all about? It's pretty wild. People have she mixed opinions started, like, on it. just belting out gospel songs on yes. an airplane? Yes. So this happened November 11th. She's a Grammy-nominated gospel singer. Her name is Bobby Storm. And she was threatened with being removed from her Delta flight after she refused to stop singing. Now, I want you to just react to the clips and determine who you think is the asshole here. The Delta employee or... Bobby Storm. All right. Let's see it. Let's take a look. I did cut out um, most of the singing because it was it was extremely obnoxious. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. (laughs) Thanks for sparing the people. They probably wouldn't like it anyway. She's 
says I'm charting right now in the building. The seatbelt signs off. The seatbelt signs off. It's not a disturbance. Once you, once you hit. It's right here, babe. Okay, have a seat. I am. I'm gonna have a seat. Okay, so watch me bless him. So I used to sing on planes a long time ago. I just found out I'm up for two Grammys. My very first time, you guys. My name is Bobby Storm. And I'm up for two Grammys. I sing for the Lord, and my song is out on all platforms. It's called We Can't Forget Them. Michael McDonald cleared it. Warren G is on the original record as well. It's with Regulators. I want to share this with you guys. So I wanted to do it when I first got on the plane. Clearly, she had just walked up there and attempted to try and do a performance for everyone, and, and she was ushered back to her seat. And this is, but she's not giving up. She's Bobby is not giving up here. I, but I was like, you know, I, I haven't done this in a while. I've gotten to the next status, so. Are you able to be quiet? <laughs> They're enjoying it. So while we're sitting here, could I please? I'm not enjoying it. So I'm asking you, can you be quiet? Okay, well, that's I find yes, that up. That's a yes or no uh, answer, please. Am I going to go to jail if I don't? Can you please answer my question? Are you willing and able to be quiet right now? I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do. I'm asking you a question, yes or no. I'm your flight leader. I need you to follow my instructions. <laughs> okay. My instructions for you to answer my question. Are you able to be quiet What right do you now? guys think? I'm asking you, ma'am. I'm asking you guys. What do you guys think? Okay. Say? If you're not able to, be, to follow my instruction, yeah. you will not be taking this flight. Ah, uh, okay. Are so you that's able to be asking. quiet? If that's the case, then that's fine. If you were the so person that's yes. in charge of it all. I'm your flight leader, yes. If you were the person in charge okay. of it all, then that's okay. fine. Okay, all right. Thank all right. you. So I'll sing it on a low for you. <laughs> if that's okay. All right. She says, okay. So the song is called We Can't Forget Them. All right. And you can download it. <laughs> Do some self-promotion. I don't know the, the issue. No one else has ever had an issue, but it's... Father, Thank you for each day in my life. I realize this makes me want to crawl inside my own body. It's so it's cringy. Crazy. Oh, he's he's telling her to shut up right now. I too again. So just so you know, if you're on this flight, you have been. Thank you so much. You gotta clap on the low. I know. <laughs> thank you so much. So look. So as Curly said, she did cut out some more of the singing because it's it's pretty annoying. But yeah, Josh, who do you think is the asshole here? Honestly, the flight flight attendant's kind of an asshole. Oh, yeah, I think he's really? being a little rude. Okay, but I think she's also being a little inconsiderate as well. Like he's getting a little. It almost seems it. it almost seems like he's personally like offended by it for some reason. Which you know, you have every right to be offended by. I would guess gospel music, um, if you don't like it or whatever. I think, I mean, they're both kind of in the wrong because I agree. I, I'd be pretty annoyed if somebody just starts belting out a song on a plane. And it was just like, okay. But at the same time, it's like, what's the harm in that, you know? Here's my thing about it. Yes, sometimes people do little performances on planes. And when the whole group is enjoying it. We're only seeing some of it. We're seeing what she is actually posting herself. This was posted by her. But and I see what you mean. He is being a little assholey, but like don't you think flight attendants get enough shit, go through enough shit dealing with people acting ridiculous on fucking planes, especially in the last couple of years it's gotten so out of control that that someone could have even complained to him for all we know. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to hear this. Can you imagine if it was, think about if it was someone from a different religion I was that was just singing say to this that. whole plane. Yeah. So that would be offensive then to them probably. Yeah. They would, I could see, you know. And it's funny because most of the time, like if it was a different religion or a different language, it's yeah. probably going to be like, you know, praying to the same God, which is funny, but like just because it's in a different language, people are going to get like exactly. weird about it. People so, would probably complain. So the rule needs to be consistent for everybody mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's just not your place to perform, whether it's a religious song or not. I think it's trying to get that viral moment yeah, of clearly. singing on the plane. Yeah. You know, people are loving it. People clearly aren't loving it. She's like, anyone, come on, you guys want me to sing, right? And if you look closely, they're all just like, please stop. The only lady who was into it was the one across from her. Yeah. Um, because I cut this out of the video, but there is a part where um, after she mentions that she's a Grammy nominated singer, which isn't, is 
true, but she's part of a musical group. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not even yeah. like she's like she's nominated. Right. The entire group is nominated. Right. Um. And so after she says that, the la- the lady in front of her, she's like, "Oh my gosh! Like, what's your name? Like, who are you? Like, kind of just you know trying to get her little, her little like fame. Oh thing. yeah. I don't for know. Sure. But. I think it's a different situation if you were to announce this and then people were to be like, please sing. Come on, let's go sing. And I think then they would have been fine with it. But if you're clearly bothering people already, it's kind of fucked up to try to use people that are trapped in a tube Mm -hmm. as your audience to do this little. She's kind of being a little forceful with it, too. You know, she's like. You know, she just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. Mm -hmm. And Imagine if you're someone on the plane who's like extremely anxious to fly and already struggling for takeoff and stuff. And then someone is doing a performance. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. And using yeah. God's name to be defiant. Yeah, is the just Lord's like not, telling me to. Yeah, yeah, it's just not an excuse. It's not a good look. Yeah, but I do. I, think, I see what you're saying. I think, they're, Josh. I think they're both at fault, honestly. Yeah, I, I agree. think he could be a little bit more. A little he was a little rude. I feel like he was just like a little aggressive mm. for this particular thing. But again, I I don't know. I didn't see the whole interaction, so maybe he's just like she was just being a pain in the ass, and he's like kind of getting fed up with it. And he's yeah. just doing his job at the end of the day, right? He's got to mm-hmm. maintain order and and keep everybody happy. And she's just like wants her, like you said, you know, five minutes of fame yeah. on that flight. Just not the place. I would be so annoyed personally. Yeah. If I was sitting on a plane and someone was doing a performance, like, oh, we're all just trying to get to right to our destination in peace. Mm-hmm. We don't need to be. You can't even leave. You yeah. can't even leave. You're stuck on the plane. Stuck list. I think that's really weird. If you if you're in a mall or something somewhere else, public where people can, can walk, walk away, mm-hmm. but they're stuck there listening to her. Yeah. I just think that's so incredibly obnoxious. And there's fringe an, for her soul. There was another part too where I cut out. Um, but after he like walks away, she says, um, she tells the people around her that she's preaching out and she says that people like that, um, referring to the flight of uh, attendant, um, can't accept what she's doing because their their spirits are too low. You know oh, what I mean? Boy. So it's like okay. yeah, so, that just took it to the next level. For right. Me. And it's That's like fucked up. Why do you like why do you have to make that comment? Like maybe he just doesn't want to hear your shitty singing. Maybe it's you know his I mean? job. Right. Yeah. Someone well, probably complained and then he just was like, Oh, okay, you know, and you can't be singing before takeoff. You're supposed to be like Yeah. And that's just such a rude comment to make. Like, oh his his he's a he's a low vibrational person. And yeah, it's like that's for all just you rude. know, that man is super religious and goes to church every Sunday morning. Yeah, he's I mean, probably, you have yeah. no idea. You have no idea. That's just so inappropriate. Yeah, it just seems like this is all about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the yeah, end of the day, she, sure. didn't, she didn't care. She's going to get her moment. It narcissistic. Try to boost their their fan base. So, I mean, Josh, this is how we do things on this show. you got to make the determination. I'm going to let you have the gavel today as a special treat. You've wow. got to decide who is the asshole. Make your ruling. And you put it into the mic. They Bobby need to be able Storm. To hear nope. Put it to your mic. You hold her. Bobby Storm is the asshole. Case closed. So you guys know that I am a big soup lady. I love soup. It is one of the best parts of this time of year. And normally I have to convince Josh to go for soup for dinner. I don't only drink soup or eat soup. (laughs) Drink soup. When when I'm sick or something. Yeah. But I must say the soups that we've had recently from HelloFresh Mm -hmm. have been banging. Yeah. I've been surprised you've been licking your bowl clean pretty yeah, much. so good. Last night we had the creamy tomato soup with pork sausage. And I think that's a huge part of it for you is you don't like when there's not a protein in the soup. No, I'm I'm a meat man. So my right. soup's got to have meat in it. <laughs> it was so good. Holly loved it too. Really easy to make too. I think that's the best thing about HealthFresh is that you can have a restaurant quality recipe put together in literally 30 minutes or less. And the soups are even easier because it's like dumping everything into a pot. Like I'd even have to dirty other dishes, which was nice. And it was so dang delicious, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, (laughs) I could have that all the time. And around this time of year, the holidays, it's getting busy people. And that's where HelloFresh's 15 minute meals can come in handy. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. Everyone wants to cut back on errands and spending time in the checkout lines this year, so skip that extra grocery store trip 
and instead get fresh ingredients and delicious recipes delivered with HelloFresh. Just pick your meals, sign on a delivery date, and sit back. Just like always, HelloFresh's ingredients travel from the farm to your door so you know they're fresh, and everything arrives pre-portioned so you can get right to cooking quick. I also love the HelloFresh market that they have now where you yeah, can, you're into the market. you've got your meals and then you can go and add add-ons. So like, say you want garlic bread with your pasta or they have a lot of really yummy desserts, but you got the apple crumble mm -hmm. desserts. I've been loving those and you just pop them in the oven for like eight minutes and then boom, you have a delicious hot dessert, which mm, I love the food this time of year, I must say. <laughs> So go to HelloFresh.com slash sesh free and use code sesh free for free breakfast for life. Mm. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash sesh free with code sesh free. HelloFresh, America's number, number one, one meal, kit. meal kit, baby. <laughs> okay, it is time for Am I the Asshole? All right. You've never done one of these with us. No, I'm new to this. I'm going to allow you to be the judge today. Normally, me and Janelle do it, but you're going to make the final call. All right. With our input, we will discuss. So the first one is, am I the asshole for telling my fiance I am losing attraction? Oh, boy. This is a man. He says, my fiance, Beth, and I have been together for two years. She is intelligent, motivated, kind, and wonderful. I love her dearly as a person. <laughs> To clarify, <laughs> but recently I've lost attraction to her and I've decided to be honest and tell her I am a very health oriented guy. I try my best to eat healthy and work out frequently. When I first met Beth, her body looked healthy. She wasn't a gym rat or anything, but she enjoyed walks and eating mostly healthy. Over the past year or so, she's gained 30 pounds. For reference, she is about 5'2 and in the high 160s now for weight. It's a very healthy weight. She doesn't eat healthy anymore. She doesn't walk or seems like she cares about herself. Obviously, my first thought was depression. And I've talked to her about that, but she guaranteed me she feels better than ever mentally, which I'm happy about. I'm a very visual man. Uh-oh. <laughs> like all men? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Over the past few months, her body has changed a lot. She's very pale and has developed dark purple <laughs> stretch marks on her stomach and legs. Her stomach has gotten bigger and she's went up a bra size. <laughs> when she's in stores, she's sweating and her thighs are sweating. She tells me she never, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she never used to get that way before. She says that the store is too hot, but it's always been the same. The other day she was trying on a dress that she wore when we first met and it didn't fit at all. She was upset and I felt bad. She asked me if she's gained weight or if I could notice it. And I told her that I could. I said to her, Beth, I love you, but your weight is starting to become unhealthy and I'm starting to lose attraction physically. She immediately walked away and came back a minute later and said, so what? People's bodies change. Is he the asshole? Oh, man. Lot to unpack here. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, this is a very, and this can go either way, right? Like, just because, I mean, in this particular scenario, it's a man saying this about his woman but it could go the other way as well right mm -hmm. so it's just a simple is he the asshole or not? i mean just based off of like gut emotion it's pretty assholey to to do these things and say these things about about the person that you love i do understand i do understand where he's coming from right like the attraction part of your relationship is very important of course it's, you know, that intimacy is very important in a relationship. So if you feel like that area of your relationship is suffering, then obviously you need to figure out how to address it and work through it together, right? But is this the way to address no. those types of feelings? No, he's definitely going about it the wrong way because you don't want to just be like, well, looks like you're getting fat and I'm not attracted to you anymore. So... You figure it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Putting it all back on her. Putting it all back on her is not going to make the situation better, in my opinion. It's going to make it worse, probably. For it's going to sure. make the relationship worse. Yeah. I think he has to decide how much he really loves her, first of all. Mm -hmm. Because if you really love somebody, the physical should not really matter at the end of the day. Like, obviously, it's important, but it shouldn't matter to the point where, you know, you're considering like leaving this person. Mm -hmm. So, I get, should I do I give advice to him or 
No, you just determine if he is the asshole. I mean, you're you're welcome to offer advice. I mean, personally, I think that if if she is asking a question like that, that as as a supportive partner, especially in a moment like that when she is upset and asking if she's gained weight or if I could notice if you know it's noticeable, I think that should be the time to to pump her up when she feels low, um, because your body does change as you get older and Absolutely. you know, women spe- especially are really prone to, to stretch marks. They're very common. They're not always caused by weight gain. It's oftentimes a cortisol thing as well. Um, and th- you know, 30 pounds, people's bodies are just, they just change over time. As you get older, I mean, your metabolism sh- slows down and there will be other times in their life where she'll probably gain weight and her body will change or she'll lose weight. And I think, at the end of the day, if your relationship is based that much on the physical, the physical, that's a that's a major problem. I think that's that's a you issue. Yeah. If she comes to you and says, I feel like I've gained weight and I'm, I'm depressed about it and I'm sad and I want help, I want advice, then maybe that's a different story. But if she's obviously upset in this moment and you come to her and say like, well, on top of it, I'm also not attracted to you. Yeah. Way to kill her self-esteem. Mm-hmm. right yeah so you're only damaging the relationship further by by doing that if anything you should find ways to encourage and you know why don't why don't you take the initiative and if you feel like you're not active together enough then get more active together and make it clear that at the end of the day no matter what happens mm-hmm. you love her for her and that right. your relationship isn't based on a certain weight right that's true so is he the asshole he is the asshole all right in this scenario case closed asshole assholian did you guys have any last thoughts on that one no no no, no. i think it was rude how he called her pale like that has nothing yeah, to pale do as fuck too yeah like wh- he just seems incredibly shallow to me and pointing out stretch marks and things like well, that. well and i wonder if he's seeking female attention elsewhere mm-hmm. when you kind of get to that point because it's like you should only have eyes for one person right so if you start having eyes for other girls then that means your what you find attractive is likely shifting to somebody else, mm-hmm. and then you're then comparing that other person to your current partner, and you're like, well, why doesn't she look like this other girl that I find attractive, and or I'm just more attracted to this other person or this look, so he's putting that back on her. And which, I think if you too- really love her, that shouldn't even be happening. I mean, no. you should just be encouraging her, and you know being there for her maybe you're just not being there for her and therefore you know well to bring up the dress that she wore that you know when they first met she wore this dress it's just so clear that he expects her to stay the exact same way does it say how long they've been together Mm-mm. no it no. doesn't that'd be another question i have i wonder oh wait cause... uh two years sorry oh, yeah. it oh does. sorry two yes. years it yeah. starts three, year, three years three together. years together yeah and she's his fiance. Yeah, they're, oh, so they're, they're planning in- to spend their lives together. Oh no! So that that does change things quite a bit. I think he's that locks in his assholeness even yeah, more. Definitely. Yep. Can't be turning like that. Think of all the ways that his body is going to change as they get older. You're not going to stay the way that you are when you first meet forever. No. No. It's ridiculous, dude. And maybe she's happy with her weight gain. Yeah. Like maybe she feels healthier. Like when he asked, like he asked her if she was, you know, depressed. she was depressed, and he's she said that she felt the best yeah. mentally and it's like well maybe maybe with the weight like maybe she feels healthier and more confident with that weight gain yeah you know what i mean like you can't determine her overall health well, by, it's by weight a 30 pound weight yeah gain. well it's possible too when they first met and like what a lot of people do when you're single you know you're trying to make yourself as attractive as possible to other people that you're potentially meet and then once you get into a relationship with somebody you feel comfortable with them. the lover's mm-hmm. gain or whatever what is yeah, it called exactly. what is that yes. there's a na- there's a name for, for when you when you like gain weight after a relationship yeah which mm-hmm. that happens to everybody because you're, yeah, you're you're happy. happy and you're enjoying life and yeah it doesn't matter right yep. so i mean what happens dude when you get old and your balls start sagging. That's right. Your <laughs> balls are going to be on the floor. Yeah. It's like... And the, you got the more of an asshole you are, the more your balls and... sag. It's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, if you're going to get married to this person, then you just got to be... You got to be... Re- what happens if she gets in a car accident and is a paraplegic? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like anything can happen in your life. There's endless things that could happen mm-hmm. that could make the physical 
There will be so changed. much change to get used to over the years imagine, that if it's starting at three years, you're in for. And imagine if, if you were bad. to have a baby, how much yep. more is her body going to change then? You're going to say yeah. that she's right. ugly because she's pregnant, because mm -hmm. she gained weight because she's pregnant oh, with she your has child? stretch marks now. Yeah. I think this is actually in her benefit. She can get out of this. And you know what? Yeah. I'd be like, thank you for showing me who you are. Exactly. Right. Said. Find Before someone I new. Before your ass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Asshole. Case Asshole. closed. All right. <laughs> moving on. Jail. We have picked all relationship ones for oh, today. Oh, of course. Okay. So am I the asshole for wanting to break up with my boyfriend because he has gotten too attached to his computer? No. <laughs> <laughs> for context, we have been together for three years and just moved to a new city together four months ago. My boyfriend has always loved video games oh, and playing course. and talking to his friends online since he was a kid. Of course. He wasn't into gaming when we first met. And we would always go out on dates and do fun things together. But about a year in, when we started having problems, he picked up gaming again. It started off where he was gaming for just a few hours a day. And then all of a sudden, right around COVID, when we both didn't have jobs, was when it got bad. It was the only thing that he would do all day. He would only get up from his chair to use the bathroom. He practically lived at his desk. I started expressing to him that I wanted to spend more quality time together and that I missed him. He would watch movies with me and buy me DoorDash just to keep me happy temporarily. But I started to get really sad and depressed because we were inside all of the time and it felt very isolating. Before we decided to move states, he told me that things will change when we move. He just really hates the city and the people in it. Well, fast forward, we moved and it feels like nothing has changed. He always has an excuse for why he wants to be on his computer. I don't think he truly understands how much this upsets me, even though I have tried time and time again to explain my feelings. I have nothing wrong with him doing something that makes him happy. But when it's affecting our relationship this much and he does it six to eight hours a day, oh my God. it's Is he a, a big Twitch problem. Is he actually like mm. making money? I think doing she this? would make that clear if that were the case. Because he <laughs> might I as well be at this being point. Overdramatic or should I break up with him? And is he the asshole? Those are the questions here. I think that definitely not being dramatic because I think this is very reasonable feeling to have, right? Oh, so for sure. That you, I mean, especially since you guys were inside together mm -hmm. and he's choosing to be, a, be a separate from you for pretty much the entire day so that he can hang out with his buddies and play games. Don't you think six to eight hours is just bad if for your health? Yeah. I mean, if you're not like a streamer where it's your job and you're making money doing it, then yeah, that's a pretty long gaming session daily. Like if you're doing that every day, like every once in a while, sure. Like it's fun to do just like game all day if you can. <laughs> <laughs> but every day is a problem for yeah. sure. That's crazy. Six to eight hours. That's I could never lot. sit there. That's a whole work day. Isn't yeah. that a fourth of a twenty-four hour period? Or I mean, that's I mean, I it's mean, a if third. It, when your third, fingers hurt, yeah. like yeah, <laughs> and your eyes and oh yeah, no, Josh. It's, it's I'm, I'm, I feel like I feel like you've I feel like you, Josh. You seem like the type who would have like big like long gaming marathons. Oh Did you yeah, ever have I mean, long days. I've been a he wishes. I've been a lifelong gamer. I mean, I love computers. She has to tell me to get off the computer a lot because. Yeah. I'm kind of addicted to them just because I've always been. And that's like what my my background is professionally. But see, this was actually a big problem for it was. Us when we first moved in together. Yeah, the but, computer was probably the biggest issue in our relationship. In the but to be <laughs> fair, you robbed me of four years of like solid gaming time because oh, you left your dorm to move in hey, with me. You know what? And I never got to take advantage of my college years. You know what? That's to, fair. To game. That's fair. You did. I mean, it's just. And I was gracious enough to allow you to come and because I, I, to me, I chose I you over go. the game. It was my insane roommate. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, we all know about the pee in the mouthwash and the restraining order. I had nowhere to go. So was Josh the asshole? I'm kidding. No, he was not. No, no I was kidding. the I'm opposite kidding. of the I'm asshole. Kidding. And I was like, yeah. I know this will affect the time I get to game because I had like, I mean, this was right when I was working in Geek Squad and like all my buddies, that's all they did is like play video games online. Yep every day and 
I never really got to partake in that that oh, life. Oh, you part? No, yes, no, yes. I did. Sometimes we give you the sometimes. night. Sometimes. Took... Sometimes I did. Oftentimes, yeah. I was still gone a lot. It's not like I was home with you all the time. I was busy in college. No, I know, I know. So I still got got a decent amount. But I didn't and get even to... when you were home, we would because we lived in a bedroom together pretty yeah, much. We yeah. never left this room, and I would sit That's in the true. bed, watch homework or watch movies, and do homework or TV or something. And you would be on the computer yeah, at yeah. the same time. True. True. It just got excessive at some points in my opinion but yeah it's I mean, hard because it young. is very addicting and a lot of the games are very addicting as well so it's it's easy to slip into this this feeling of like i need to play i need to keep up with what everybody else is doing because that's the thing too is if you have friends that that's all they do you feel like you're missing out when they're on and you're not on mm -hmm. and so it's kind of this like internal struggle to to like i see balance that. it i see that but I think I think you have to learn to balance it for your health, for your relationships and just overall in general. I mean, it's everything in life is about balance. So, well, that's when it really becomes a problem when it's affecting your relationship. Yes. Is that is it more important to right. you than your significant to have your other. girlfriend pissed off at you? You know, potentially thinking about breaking up with you. I think that's where he needs to come to Jesus moment and probably an ultimatum from her of like, hey, I'm cool with you playing video games, but six to eight hours is excessive. Can we at least compromise and cut that down to like three, four hours a day to start? Even that's and then, insane to me. <laughs> and then I get four hours with you and then we'll whittle it down from there. Right? Okay, mm -hmm. quick question though. If that was me, okay, I've actually experienced this <laughs> as well. You and Jared had this problem Jared's too. Jared's a big huh? gamer too, so. Yeah, I mean, he's not like anymore, but just about like how you were like, you know, you have your times and I would know. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go run errands. And this is bigger in North Carolina when we we didn't know anybody. And so he'd game for hours. And then it like bothered me that he was doing that. Like almost like I was embarrassed for him. I'm like, what are you, <laughs> like, why is that so fun? And then, but again, <laughs> I wouldn't want him to say, okay, I'll cut it down to three hours. And then you get this many hours. Cause I would be like, this was a thing. I was, I told him, I said, I want you to want to hang yeah. out with me yeah that's not, what it is <laughs> not schedule me in <laughs> yeah and i mean we had some bi big moments over the games but oh, we did too i mean it oh, was, we've thrown down over the we games did before. in our early days i think sure. sometimes people have to go through that because i do think guys if they grew up playing games you know like jared has a brother you have a brother like y you guys do that together well yeah. it, you know? i think for us the other thing too is throughout all of your childhood like you do get to enjoy games but you don't get that unlimited time with them mm -hmm. right because your you're parents busy are with giving school. you the rules yeah and, it's yep. the rules thing so, so like once you're once, on your own it's like your big once moment. you're on your own and also you have friends that do that probably don't have girlfriends but are just on all the time and like you know enjoying their life playing games it but are they enjoying well their i think life? It, i think it creates like this this false fantasy in your head of like mm -hmm. what they're doing is more fun than what i'm doing even though i also have a girlfriend who i get to sleep with and you know have fun other ways <laughs> but somehow this this guy is like living it up my loser because, friends with their not girlfriends <laughs> right right and that that's the reality they have the real all the freedom yep. yeah, and because it's i think it's hard for a lot of girls to understand just like the appeal of video games for guys i think it's yeah. like if you don't play like there's a lot of girls that do game and oh, they do get girls, it yeah. and they're like oh yeah or they game with, they game their, with them yeah with mm -hmm. their guys which i think is every guy's dream to have a girl that like <laughs> wants to game with them josh has tried so hard I've over the years to even times. get me to find a game that i like so i can play something else at the same time that he's playing yeah. mm -hmm. that I've was tried the every sims, sims gets boring quick <laughs> yeah you played uh roller coaster tycoon for a while i did and then i couldn't beat the harder levels and I gave up. That was a big that was a big thing in my last relationship is we we did spend a lot of time playing video games together because I was oh, yeah, I've always been too. I've always I had always been into gaming. Um but like the like after I would say like after like the first few years of our relationship, I kind of just stopped because I was like this isn't fun anymore. Like I can yeah. only do it for so much. And like but like I mean I'm not gonna lie like having like playing those games with him was super fun and it was a great like quality time. You know what I mean? Yeah I could see that um, but I also understand like not everybody enjoys video games and yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, I mean, I got burnt out on them pretty mm -hmm. quickly. You know what I mean? Did it ever become an issue in your relationship? Um, Like, did and, he excessively play? No, not even that. It was more just like, 
I mean, it would be boring if like, I mean, if he was playing for long periods of time and I was just like sitting there and like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it would be boring and like sometimes yeah. it would just kind of be like, well, I don't really want to play with you anymore. Like I don't want to play anymore. Like can you just go do something? You it know what starts mean? to feel like the game is more enjoyable to him than time with you. And that's what <laughs> yeah. it, it starts to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so and for funny. some people it is. I mean, yeah, I think this is so common. Oh, this, this is yeah. so common. Exactly. I think this is like the modern day rela- most, biggest like issue most in relationships. Men, I feel like there's just there's a handful of men out there who have no interest in video games, but the majority of guys enjoy video games in yeah. some some capacity. I think you just as you grow, I think as you grow older too, you just start like having different priorities. Yeah, you start realizing like And that's kind of like what happened to me is like I like I said I would play games a lot. Like all through middle school, all through high school as a big gamer, and then probably like my early 20s, like 22, 23 is like when I kind of stopped. Yeah. Um just cuz I mean you have different priorities and I don't know, I just had different interests as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. thankfully we kind of grew together with that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like we we kind of that like so like for me personally video games was never like a, a problem in my relationship. That's um, nice. Yeah. But yeah, it was but definitely I can our see. biggest problem for years. It really was. We, we really fought over that a lot. Well, it's like part of me was like chasing this fantasy of like being a stream, especially once Twitch came along and mm-hmm. streamers came along. I was like, God, that would be the dream job to play <laughs> video games oh. for a living, get to play eight hours a day every day and get to make money and be like, this is my job. So I'm going to work right now. <laughs> So you're on. saying you're saying if this guy was a Twitch streamer and was making money, he would have. Been, I think he this would, would be, be a different scenario. Absolutely. I do agree. Yeah. I think she would. If it's if it's his job, it does change. Things. If he's like paying the bills with his video games, mm-hmm. six to eight hours a day, like I but think I think she would have brought that up. She would. <laughs> she'd be like, okay, well, he's he's making money. He's working. Sounds so. like he's losing money. Like, but I think a lot of guys chase that dream, and so they think if I play long enough yeah. or if I try it out, like. I'll be able to make this into something and it's much, much harder than it looks for sure. You know, it's so funny when we used to have these arguments in our college days, I used to always bring up like, well, if we get married and have kids one day, you're going to have basically no time for oh games. God, and that I'd used like to set you cry. off. I'd be like, no. <laughs> he would be like, he would be like, this is going to be part of my life forever. You don't understand. Like if we have kids, we will make time for the games. And how often do you get a game now that we have a talk? Actually, I game quite a bit. Really? Yeah. When? Uh, in the morning, <laughs> I wake up early. No, honestly, oh, that's why you like to wake up early. That okay, that makes sense. No, well, which it's is like, a fair trade because I like my, to get an extra hour of sleep. And Josh yeah, gets well, up it's early. like I started learning as you be, as I've gotten older, and just I mean, I'm a very busy guy. Um, time management. <laughs> yeah, like time management has to be better, and then I'm I've also gotten good at like giving myself a set amount of time and. I'm able to like stop when I need to and just be like, yeah. all right, that was fun. I got my enjoyment because like video games for me, even to this day is like one of my greatest escapes from mm-hmm. work life and just I enjoy it. I love being immersed in a world. I love being on the computer. I love kind of being a part casually of the of the gaming gaming world. And it's just kind of, you know, it's like that nostalgia that I get to hold on to. And and it's relaxing for me. I mean, that's why I do. It's just straight relaxing and I can just kind of like leave everything else behind and yeah, I, I dive totally in. Get that. but like i i know the appropriate times time. it's not like i'm yeah. like cut into i don't cut into anybody else's no. time and it doesn't my affect daughter's your time, job or being my a dad time or my time it right doesn't i get plenty of it's like i'll play games till my daughter wakes up then i'll go get my daughter and we'll hang out yeah. or if she's napping like in the first six months of her life when she was napping a ton yeah, i played a, i played a lot of yeah. games during that time because she mm-hmm. was napping and you know just giving myself a break. And well, hey, so, we're going to one nap a day, so the time might go down even Well, it's more. just like you got to find the time. And if you you can't be like, oh, I didn't get the time today, so I'm pissed off and, yeah. you know, I need to carve gotta it out. with the punches. Eventually, every guy's got to realize that you become a casual gamer. Yeah. Like, that's just the reality of it. Nobody can be this hardcore well, gamer. Well, not every guy, but if, if you Unless want you're these streamer, things in life, yeah. there are sacrifices right. for these things. Absolutely. So let's get back to the question here. She's asking specifically, am I being overly dramatic? Should I break up with him? No and no. And I don't think he's being an <laughs> asshole either. I, say, I think he's just. I think he's conf- like, yeah, he just needs. He needs a wake up call. Yeah. He just need. She needs to sit down and be like, hey, you're spending entirely too much time on this. And what if he you says, told me you were going to give me more time? Fuck no, I'm going to stick to my six to eight hours a day. Does well, she then, break up with him? Yeah. Give him the ultimatum at that point. Be like, I it's agree. the, you know, it's limit the games or I games walk. or me. 
but don't but don't that's the thing don't go too extreme don't be yeah. like you have to give up video games altogether <laughs> because he will choose the games probably <gasps> or he'll Ooh. tell you he chooses you and then be good for three days and then, <laughs> and then it's it like same like, well, i don't know if you ever run into that but. He, well he <laughs> yeah. literally did that he's he promised her that once they moved that things would change True. and obviously nothing yeah. has changed so his words are meaningless. I'm so kidding, she's but. already kind of given him that ultimatum. ultimatum. She's already expressed this and he's continued to stick to the six to eight hours a day. Well, if he won't give up the six to eight hours a day, then I'd say he's probably not the one for you. I say dump his ass. Wow. I, I just, that's ridiculous. Well, I think that is ridiculous. If it's, if it clearly, it means more to him than his relationship. Right. And if she's not happy, then absolutely girl, get out of that. You know what I mean, mean? Yeah. some girls are cool with that though. Like there's some girls out there that'll, make their guys food and bring it to them while okay, they're Okay, so the next and, question, you know, <laughs> that's what you wish I was, There's baby. girls I'm out sorry. there that, that support the gamer life for sure, but. Yeah, hey, I support if it's, I love our, um, you know, at night when we, when you bring the game upstairs and we still get to cuddle in bed and watch some yeah, reality yeah. TV while the game, compromise. that's fine with me. Compromise. 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 I am, I also, this is, I mean, you guys don't have to worry about this because you're on a strict <laughs> schedule, but I asked Jared to make me food if he's gaming I'm like, hey, can you make me this and on your next whatever, you know, once you die or whatever. (laughs) And then (laughs) so so it kind of breaks up the but I feel kind of guilty because I would never well not guilty, but it's just funny. I would never go and be like, Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Like I I I'm not your fucking mom. Fuck no. I'm sorry, I'll never be that. Can I change your piss bottle? Is your diaper okay, need changed? Okay, so the question here, though, overall is, is who is the asshole? Is she the asshole or is he the asshole? An asshole has to be determined or doesn't. So we've had some times where we're like, neither one is really the asshole. I say I say he's the asshole. I agree. And she's not. All right, I'll 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 go with you No, guys. you're the final judge. You get to make the call today, babe. I gave you that power. Well, I'm going to go with he's the asshole because he did say that when they moved, he was going to change his ways and he just... Use that as an excuse to keep her happy for the time in which they moved. And then they moved and he's like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. So all right. official ruling is asshole. He's close. Jesus. <laughs> nice. Break my hand. Okay. We have one more quick all one right. and then we're going to get into our game. So let's go quick with this one. Wow. See, Corelli hates when we clap into the mics because <laughs> it ends up sounding really bad. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm clapped over here. away from the mic. Yeah. That wasn't She's actually too bad. mute you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Censor right. Josh. That was a good one though. I like how you picked one very applicable to me. Oh, yeah. Sydney told me about that one. I was like, perfect for Josh. Okay. Am I the asshole for not liking my anniversary gift? What the hell is this? (laughs) They're all relationship ones. I know, but why are they so relatable to us? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) you don't like your anniversary? How is this relatable to us? I've never liked some. I've never not liked something you've given me. (laughs) He just exposed. Exposed, Yeah. (laughs) Josh. Oh, you don't like something? Oh, it is applicable, but. Okay, yeah, I but see what you're I'm saying. sure I'm not an asshole like whoever this person is. So. <laughs> no, but Josh is the hardest person to shop for. Oh, I, I am, can't imagine. He is so. I'm just a picky, picky motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, about everything. Like I'm yeah. a Virgo. Like what? what can I've I say? always had trouble getting Josh gifts, and he'll he'll try to be like, "Oh, I like it." I've I can never tell. liked gifts I've gotten my entire life. Ugh. Nobody could ever <laughs> buy me good gifts. Dude, I was disappointed dude, every I'm, Christmas, I'm, every birthday <laughs> since I was born. I'm no getting joke. scared because we're doing Secret Santa, and I do not want to get Josh. Has me. I've, oh, you're fucked. I'm sorry. I have tried so hard over the. Actually, last Christmas I got you some things you liked. You liked those Takova boots. But yeah, I have to like literally tell her what I want exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't find those on my own. I on tried, her own. I, baby. No, I know you try, and I appreciate you trying. But I just would rather save people the heartache of me <laughs> of like my face not being what you. There has see. been some times that I've gotten Josh really nice gifts that I thought he was going to love, and he didn't like them, and it was it caused tears yeah i've had to how do you know do he doesn't like it because i can tell like you won't wear it or or uh, yeah or it. he'll just i i know when he's excited about something and there's been times where i've given him things <laughs> or he's just like, my oh, reaction nice. won't be mm. what you're looking for you know yeah i'll just be like he's oh, just really hard to shop for that's nice thanks <laughs> you're right this does kind of apply to us we celebrated our two-year anniversary yesterday every other year we do a trip and in the alternative year we do a dinner and a gift it is the gift year, which this is kind of strange. It's their two year anniversary. So this yeah. is like all they've done so far the last two years. <laughs> they did a trip for year one, gift yep. for year two. Okay. We set a budget of $200 and both dropped some ideas for each other. That's nice. Now he came to me a while ago and he said he spent $400 on the gift. And I was shocked and kind of hoping it would be a nice piece of jewelry that I wanted. I got his gift right at the $200 mark. 
a nice bottle of local whiskey, a good cider, a maple mixer to make some old fashioned since he loves them, and a whiskey barrel to store the drink. Very nice. He mentioned at some point how he liked each of those things, and I thought it made a great gift, and he loved it. I opened my gift, a Josh Allen signed pop figure thing. So I'm guessing it's one of those little yeah, it's pop. Like, pop uh, we've talked about those yes. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those little. Yeah, I know what those are. Janelle has uh, yeah. Funko yeah. Pops. Funko yeah. Pops. Funko <laughs> Pops. I don't collect these. I like football, but not that much. So is Josh Allen a football player? Yeah, the okay. Buffalo Bills. Gotcha. I was literally, we were literally just looking that up. <laughs> I like football, but not that much. And he gets her a $400 Josh Allen pop figure. They're not even $400, though. No, they can go up to that. Oh, really? It depends. Mm-hmm. There's, we looked into it. Oh, damn. There's limited edition ones. Oh, they, shit. Yeah, it's a whole world. So he dropped all of his money on one of those? Yee, 400 bucks. And I never suggested anything remotely similar to it. What am I supposed to do with it other than oh. display it? I mentioned before that I'd love something simple like new nursing clothes to help me feel more normal or a massage or a necklace with our daughter's birthstone. I'm not trying to be ungrateful. I just don't get why he got it. Of course, I expressed how cool it was and that I was thankful for it. And I asked what made him think of it. And he simply said he saw it and thought it was a cool, expensive gift. <laughs> I'd rather have a $20 bag of Epsom salt to use. But at least I did get the gift. He forgot my last two birthdays. So, okay, I'm guessing that this is their two-year wedding anniversary, maybe, and that I, they've been together longer than yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. That Because that's the only thing that yeah. makes sense. Well, anniversary gift tends to lean towards wedding anniversary versus, like, yeah, your dating, dating anniversary. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 like, right, right. Like, yes. I mean, people celebrate both, but yeah, yeah. usually gifts are associated with wedding anniversary. She says, I think I have high expectations, and I feel like I'm being snotty. Please tell me if I am. Do I say something to him or just ignore it? Ooh. No, my man's is dumb. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. Like, dude, that is so fucked. It sounds like let's he be real. Wanted that it. was a gift for you. Totally. All right, like disguised oh, as a gift for your pop. significant other. <laughs> Could you imagine your face? Like, if Josh gave you that, <gasps> I would, dude. She'd probably be like, return it. Yeah, I probably. You'd would. probably be like, I don't give want me the four hundred dollars instead. Literally, yeah, like, yeah. I don't think I think Jared was being serious. Same. I'd I mean, be like, is this a, a doll? joke? Yeah. yeah. What am I supposed to do with this? Sell it? Especially a football player. I mean, that's so weird. Also, the fact that he forgot her birthday the last few years. Two. And they've been married. Oh. Like, and if they're married, like. They have a child together. Yeah. That's so disrespectful. Dude, that would hurt my feelings so bad if, like, yeah. my God. person forgot my birthday. I'd be done. I'm sorry. If you had ever forgot my birthday, I'd be out. Yeah. That's fucked up, right? Yeah, it is. God, why Maybe are I wouldn't be out. That was assholes. a little dramatic, but I'd be pissed. Why I'd is, be really mad. Why are all the guys assholes in these stories? It's always the why guy. Why are men? We ask ourselves every why week. Why are men assholes? No, there's there's plenty of girl assholes. These just happen to be. Oh. No, we we get a lot <laughs> where like, it's damn. like the girls oh, yeah. are fucking. This insane. is how it always goes. Yeah. And shit, because he's clearly the asshole. I mean, that's not a thoughtful gift. That's a gift for yourself, clearly. Yeah. And and he doubled their price range for yeah. it too. Yeah. <laughs> She would have been much happier with Epsom salt. some soap and salts and <laughs> scrubs, a coupon for a massage or something. You know I think I mean? she's being so kind to say, like, I feel like I'm being snotty and I have high expectations when she <laughs> literally would have been fine with a $20 bag of Epsom salt to right, use. Right, right. I think she's very kind, honestly. He's the one that's she, not kind. He's so does not, she say something or just ignore it? Say something. Mm-hmm. like dude say a whole lot of something <laughs> i just couldn't get past the fact that he forget her birthday you know what i, I mean yeah. like that's fucked for the la- and that's the ch- mother of your child like it's terrible it's bad it sounds like you might have a bigger issue here sounds mm-hmm. like your with, husband with sucks. your uh yeah <laughs> agreed that he's thinks that that's a acceptable wedding anniversary that's there's nothing romantic about like yeah come on we all know what good if you just google anniversary gifts <laughs> It gives you you endless ideas. (laughs) What's that one store that um, things remembered or something like that? He was better off getting like a like a things. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) was that something something from there? I did. I still have it for like our first one of our dating anniversary in high school. Yeah, that's the thing. To the mall, I am married to the best gift giver in the world, and it really is hard to give you anything. See, that's my thing. Every year, I feel like I fail compared to your gifts. I don't like people getting gifts for me because they just (laughs) don't do a good job. But I love. (laughs) <laughs> you give me some good gifts, but I love giving gifts. Like you I'm do. a major gift, per- the best gift person. Ever. 
for everybody in my life. I, I'll, I will give you the best gift you've ever gotten, guaranteed. So, in fact, this morning I was getting all stressed out about Christmas and I said to Josh in the bathroom, like, what do you think about just not giving each other gifts this year? Because I know Josh is going to get me something that's amazing and I'm going to love it and then I'm going to struggle so much or I'm going to try to get you something good and then you still won't like it. Yeah. I've told her nothing that I wear. Do not buy me anything to wear. Yeah, he's so picky about Shoes, shirts. I have gotten you some good shoes over the years. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a few pairs. <laughs> so, Josh, what is your... Uh, <laughs> since you're so, like, you know... Yeah. What's your process? How do you analyze the... Per like, how, like... I do a Long deep dive. Advance, I do a you... deep dive on that person. He's it's... normally last minute as fuck too. He still somehow pulls it. Well, off. I most people that I am close to in my life, I already know like what they what they like, and so I hope I, I hope that for secrets, and I hope that you get my name. <laughs> <laughs> I like to I like to find. I don't like. To, I'm not one of those. I can't stand people that just give like gift cards and especially like a Visa card. Like that's the laziest gift you can possibly give somebody. Oh, you can't stand. No them. offense to anybody that does that, but. <laughs> I agree. I am all about like finding something unique and cool that I know that person's going to be super into that isn't just like available on the shelf at the store. Like mm -hmm. I find things and brands that are not all that common oh, and yeah. end up being really cool gifts. He's always introducing me to I literally bought I her for Christmas a couple of years ago. Like, uh, what was it? Um, the Cathedral. Oh, that was a great gift. Um, all the way from South America. Yeah, a crystal. God damn, what's the crystal, crystal called? Crystal uh, citrine. I'm, citrine, yes, citrine cathedral. It's beautiful. Literally, it was this massive box. It was super heavy. Yeah, that was definitely one of the best gifts you've ever given me. Oh, when, was that the, the year one? I got pregnant? I got hooked up, dude. My Christmas was insane. Yeah, I went bonkers with that one. Yeah, you must have just really felt the love for me that year. Well, it was and so that was fun the year too. I, I didn't get you. Well, I got you a lot, but not compared to what you got me. I was. Like, um, shook. you gave him a child. Yeah, that's true. I will <laughs> say, I will ever. say, and this is why this dude is an asshole. There are so many more gifts for women than there are for men. I feel true like true that. Like women have yeah. such a wider range of gift options mm -hmm. versus men. It's very small. Yep. And in like a lot of things that men like now, video games are all virtual. You don't go buy. You know, you used to like go buy the video game from the store and give it to them, but yeah. now everything's just instant download. So it's like, there's not a lot of options. What is it? Watches, clothing, yep. sports stuff. Okay, so sorry to cut you off, but we, we got to wrap Asshole. this up so we can play this game. Asshole case she's, closed. She needs to find a new man. All right, let's play the newlywed game. I'm really excited for this. So let's play the newlywed game. Game the new merch. Fuck yeah. Even okay. though we've been married for a long, long time. Yes. The oh, question, we're still in the honeymoon phase, right, yeah. baby? That's right, always, forever. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> we kind of are. I feel like we've had a we've had a total we've entered like, a new uh, honeymoon phase once our daughter was born. Yeah, no joke. Like having a child together, like just like lit the spark. Like, it did, in my opinion. It's, it's like a damn bonfire ever. now, man. It's, it's hot. <laughs> Hell yeah! You're gonna see the questions shown on the screen, and then Josh and Kendall have one minute to write their answers down on the whiteboard. Do not show each other what you're like what you wrote down and once the timer is up, show your board. Okay. All right. So we're answering all three questions at once. Yes. The questions okay. are uh who has a shorter temper? Who okay. apologizes first? And who is most likely to get into arguments with customer service? Eight, set, go. You guys can do this quicker than Yeah, we're not gonna need a full minute. Yeah. I all right. Ready? Ready? So for who has a shorter temper, put me. You put the same, I see. Kendall for sure. Mm -hmm. And then who apologizes first? I put Josh. Me for sure, because it's almost instantaneous. <laughs> I'm <actually> really <laughs> good at apologizing. Who is more likely to get in arguments with customer service? I said me. Kendall for sure. <laughs> wow. She okay. literally like gets mad at me if I don't get mad at customer service fast <laughs> enough. She's like, get mad with them. When it's warranted, when they're being mean back. Yeah, you're not a you're not a you're not a Karen. No, I'm like actually I'm really nice to customer service people most of the uh -huh. time, unless Unless they start getting fucking snippy with me and mean. I don't yes. like that. Well, uh, I usually handle the customer service stuff because of that very reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I still get it done. It just is not quite as fast as you want it sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job. So we All win right. a point. You got three points. Oh, nice. Yeah. First question. What's the one material item Josh 
can't live without. So both of you are answering that. And to clarify, we're playing as a team, kind of, even though we're not against anyone else. Right. How many points can we get together? Mm -hmm. We have to get the same answer to get the point. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. All right. One material item that Josh can't live without. And what's one material item that Kendall can't live without? Okay. And you can guess too. Oh, this one's a little harder. No, it's not. Don't overthink it. This is easy. This is cake. Material item. You think Kendall? You know Kendall too? Oh, yeah. She She's not going to probably say this because she doesn't want to admit that this is the item that she can't live without, but... <laughs> Kendall's I don't know what I can't honest. live without. There's so many things that I can't live without. What's, what's one thing that you can't fucking go like two seconds without before you're like, where is it? Okay, you got like 10 seconds. Eight, okay. seven, six, five, four. Show your boards. I Computer, put... phone. Yep. Wow. Look at you guys go. Okay. I was like, don't overthink it because you literally can't live without your phone. That's so true. I can't. You like get wiggy if you don't have it. I do. It. And I, I could not live without my computer. Cause... Especially because I have to have something to listen to at all times. Yeah. I use my phone for like, it's I like get your little without TV. It. It's like my little friend. Your personal TV you bring around with you. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> Next question. If Kendall could have a superpower, what would it be? And if Josh could have a superpower, what would it be? Two guesses are allowed. Two, get... two guesses allowed for each question? Yes. Oh, this is so hard. 20 seconds. Think just like superhero superpowers. Yeah. Mentally connect. All right. Or dang, up. I only had time to write one for each. That's okay. So for Kendall, superpower, see the future. You're so right, babe. You would, that would 100% be the superpower you'd want because you literally can't stop thinking about the future. So if you just knew it, <laughs> then right. we, you'd just be such a better, better person, I think. <laughs> um, across the board. So or, or I'm worse. so anxious about the future yeah. at all times. Yeah. The other guess I had was teleport. I think you've even said this to me that you'd love to be able to just like travel wherever you want to go instantaneously. Oh, that's such a good one. God, you're so good. What'd you put for yourself? Yeah, what did you put? I put power to read minds. Which I also would like. Yeah. <laughs> but yours sure. are better for me. Yeah. See, you know me better than myself. Yeah. What'd you put for me? I put invisibility so you could That's what I did people. too. Really? Invisible. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how many times this is this is don't judge me for this, but you know how many times throughout my years that I've dreamt about what I would do if I could like make myself invisible. What would you do? I would do all sorts of crazy shit. <laughs> I've like had I've had like daydreams where I'd be like I would sneak into a store and then I would stay there until it closed and then just wreak havoc on the store and steal everything. What? And That's what you would do with it? Yeah. <laughs> steal Among everything. Other things. No, I know. It, like when I was younger and like yeah, I didn't yeah, have yeah. shit, but but yeah. And then Read Minds was my second See, thing I for thought myself. you would like invisibility so that you can creep on people because Josh is the biggest <laughs> yeah, people but that watcher would, in the world. I would just go around and like fuck with everybody oh if I could be invisible. I Definitely. would love to. Oh my God. Same because I would, I love like this is. I'm exposing myself right now. I love looking into people's windows, like not in a creepy way, but like when I'm walking past a house and like yeah, I do doors open and I love seeing like their decoration. Me too. If I was invisible, oh my God, I'd be the biggest creep. You just be but, like, in not, their like, house, like looking around. <laughs> but like not like a creepy, like not in a creepy way. Like I'm not going to, you know, cross any lines, but I just want to see people's decoration. Yeah. Without seeming like a big ass. Oh, I love sitting and looking at people's houses too. Yeah. But yeah, Josh is the biggest people watcher. And our daughter seems to be a people watcher too so far. <laughs> yep. So yep. I think she gets that from you. So what, what do we get for points on that one? One. Okay, next one. You're both, Kendall, obviously you are going to know this, but you have to put down the correct answer. So what was so, the name of Kendall's very first pet? Okay. And just for me? Mm-hmm. Josh is going to answer and then you answer too. Should this be for my personal first pet or like the pet this that your, I had your when home, my parents? In your home. You know, your home. very, very first pet. Okay. Yeah. So, the, I mean, these guys were around when I was born. Yeah, this is easy. Easy peasy. What'd you write? Marley and Hannah the cats. That's correct. Nice. Oh, I just know you have so many icons. pets, so I didn't know if, you know. Oh, I didn't know if it meant it we know of our, like my uh, first pet by myself as a guinea pig. We know each other's pet history pretty well. Oh, yeah. I would have been able to answer Oh, wait. So it, was guinea, it wasn't those then? No. Like it, your very first, oh, your pet. My cats were around oh. before I was born, but then when I got older, I was allowed to get a guinea pig. Gotcha. Okay. Which he would have known the name, just for funsies. What were the names Jimmy. of my... No, Jimmy was your guinea or, pig, no, no, no. dude. Uh, <laughs> shit. 
what is your guinea pig you've name? heard they were food items it was uh co oh. was it coffee no no <gasps> it toast or something you don't know this i don't do i i don't like guinea pigs i try to forget about guinea pigs i love guinea pigs <laughs> We were just watching a show the other night that had guinea pigs. 90 Day Fiance, like, the dude has two guinea pigs. Oh, am I just watching that? Yeah. yeah. Oh my it's God, we really need to talk season. about it. Yeah, it's a good do. season. And his girl's from Peru where they eat guinea pigs, which yeah. is funny. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, if you do anything bad, I'm going to eat I your guinea like pig. I feel like that's why they cast them. They're yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, no, my guinea pigs were chip, chocolate chip, chip and Jesus. almond butter. Yeah, chip. No. <laughs> anyway. Chip. All right. And Josh's okay. first pet was Jasper the dog. Yep. Nice. What is Kendall's love language? What is Josh's love language? Mm. Out of the five official yeah. love languages. The answer Ooh, for... Okay. Oh, this is so... It's hard because I feel like people have multiple love can, languages. What are the love languages again? Yeah, can we bring them Physical up? Physical touch, words of affirmation, um, quality time, and gifts. Giving gifts. Uh, uh, gift I like gift all giving. of those options. Or like getting... But there is one that She's I think an all or nothing kind of girl, so... And then but Josh I'm is. just gonna go with like what you've made the biggest deal about in our relationship, and what I made the biggest deal about. Yeah, like what you like voice to me is the biggest, most important one. I think I know yours, Kendall. Yeah. So words of affirmation, gifts, quality time, acts of service, and physical touch are the five um, love languages. I don't know. Sometimes mine change. Yeah. See, this is hard. But I'm gonna roll with these. Come on, you it. know. No, okay. You know. I think I feel like we both have What's two What's most main ones. impactful? Aren't we allowed to put two questions? Two no, answers? only one guess for this one. Okay. All right, you ready? All right, yeah. For myself, I put words of affirmation. Oh, I put quality time. That's also that's definitely. I second. thought you were gonna put quality time. Yeah, quality time would probably be even more so than words at. Probably. Yeah. You're right. Because if I, I if I didn't spend any quality time with you, but just and I just was nice like, text. oh, I love you. You know, you're the best. Blah blah blah. But you you're really beautiful. good at expressing it through words, and I think that's what makes our relationship yeah. so strong. Because I think that's what I need most. And I've taken that test before, and I always get words of affirmation. Okay. So damn, we didn't get that one. Then. But quality time is close. What'd you put for me? See, I was I was torn between acts of service and physical touch, but I went with physical touch. Good. I put touch too. All right. Definitely touch. <laughs> <laughs> You know, hugs and yeah, smooches just hugs. and yep. ass grabs. Okay, doesn't that, like a good ass grab. Those are our 10 newlywed questions. Yes. yes. Okay, wow. so what do we get? Yep, seven out of 10. Not too bad. Nice. Hey, I think we're at a good place, And a baby. couple that were 70%. like almost there. Yeah. 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 Just a little bit of a, gotta work on some things, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We definitely need to see a therapist. Always keep of those, working but... on it. <laughs> this can be your therapy. Yeah. You know, whenever you need to see if you guys are on the same page, just come on the come session. On the game. Just come on the session. Do the, do <laughs> For a, sure. Do a quiz. There's no better place quiz. to work on your marriage than on a podcast in front of Absolutely. thousands yeah. of people. Absolutely. Just exposing it all. Through yeah. a PowerPoint game. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, that was fun. Well, thank you, babe, for being here. It's You're always welcome. fun doing the show with you. It's always a pleasure to, to join y'all over here. Mm -hmm. Maybe next time we can join you guys on Lights Out. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We've talked about like, what if the Sesh girls came on Lights Out? I don't know. You guys might be too too scared over there. I'd be too scared. It's a little little dicey. But most of what you guys talk about freaks me the fuck out, and I I can't imagine if we really did switch, like set up the yes. episodes ahead of time, and then we just left, and you guys did it. But you have to follow our outline of the episode, <laughs> and you guys have and to then follow we go ours. do the same thing. <laughs> oh man, that'd, that'd be, be hilarious. <laughs> that'd be so funny. April Fools. Mm. Let us know if you guys want to see that. Mm -hmm. It could be funny. Be April really Fools is on a Monday next year. Watch out. Hey, and guess what? That's the day that we both record our shows. That is. But you guys don't see it till Wednesday That's and a, Friday. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> that'd be fun. Anyway, always fun hanging out with you, babe. Janelle can leave anytime she wants. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I do miss Janelle. It's not the same. I, I want us to do one of those episodes where we have you guys, you and John on. I miss when we used to do that. Oh, like the couples on? Yeah. Yeah. And it used to be easier to do that because sometimes we would record at night and now yeah, we never do that. We stick to business hours. You have to like take a take a leave from work to come do yeah. that now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no, it was fun. Thanks for having me. It's nice to see all of you out there. <laughs> all you, what do you call them? Sessies? The sessies. Sessies. Mm -hmm. Squishy sessies. Squishy sessies. <laughs> we are squishy. We should squishy make a squishmallow. Squishy. <laughs>
Yeah, we should make squishmallows. Yeah, we should. Squishmallows. 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 All right, guys, that's going to be it for us today on this episode of The Sesh. We will be back next week with our lovely Janelle. We miss her so much. We hope you guys all have a great holiday. We're grateful and thankful for all of you so, so very oh, yeah. much. Absolutely. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And I'm grateful for you, ladies. Thank you for oh. making this show happen yeah, every this week. Yeah, fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. They're amazing. We love you. Fun. Good times. And that's it for us. But we will be back next week. And until then, keep it fresh. Yeah. See, I fucked up the outro again. I don't even know the outro to my until, own show. It's until it's next until time. Until next time. Keep it. Keep it fresh. fresh. Right. Kind of. Yes. See you next time. <laughs> until death. Do us part.